Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're at Form Next. So this is Form Next 2022. Uh, there are some amazing manufacturers here with loads of cool new tech and loads of fun things to look at and touch. So we are gonna take a look around, do some interviews and show you some of the massively cool stuff that is coming in the next year. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. So we are at Tier Time, I'm with Colton, and we are talking through some of these really cool machines. So these are your UP 300s. So let's talk a little bit about what these things are for. So I see you've got a couple of different tool head configurations. So you've got a two in one out and a, and a single extruder, but you've got a lot of really cool features in these. So if you wanna talk a little bit about the machines, yeah, so um, as you can see, we have two different models. So this one and this one. The difference is on this one, you have a double extrusion system. On this one, it's a single extrusion system. So this one, it's a simple extrusion head. But this model, we have a different head for two filaments. One filament for your model. So uh, PLA, PTG, ABS, everything you want. The maximum temperatures is uh, 310 degrees. And the second filament is for the PVA, the loop filaments. So these are the PVA supports. So these exactly. are when we are doing, uh, these are for when we're doing really complex geometries, but you don't want to have all that surface scarring. So you have, you have your whole model there, your supports then this goes into, so PVA ones just go into water, water yes. and they just dissolve away and then you're left with a perfect interface layer. You don't have to worry about any surface scarring and you're left with a really high detail part. Right. So, they're re so PVA supports are actually quite hard to do for a lot of machines. They don't, they, mixing the material can be really challenging. So do you also, do you do a different support material when you're doing the ABS stuff? Yeah, for the ABS, we use um, HIPS filaments. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Or different filaments, like the filaments from VA Safe. Yep. Uh, these filaments, you can use PLA and ABS with, uh, but uh, many brands have many specific filaments for your filaments you want. And those don't dissolve in water, do they? They dissolve in like um, acetone, is it, or something? Waters or delimonel. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So these machines, let's, I mean, they are, they're sort of, they're, two, they're 255 by 205 by 225. Yep. What kind of print temperatures can we go up to with these? Because obviously they're enclosed, so they look really nice. Yeah, so on the single system, um, only the bed heat, the maximum heat is uh, 110 degrees. Right. The extruders is 310 degrees. On the dual version, uh, on this one, you have a um, system dryer for the filaments inside. Right. And uh, for the void volume, you have a heat system too. For, for the ABS, it's perfect. So that enclosed material is really important when you're dealing with a lot of engineering grade materials. A lot of engineering grade materials are hydroscopic, so they suck all of the moisture out of the air. And PVA is a prime example of that. If it's a little damp, a little humid or anything like that, PVA will just suck all of the moisture out of the air, bake it into the filament, and then it won't print properly. So having that material inside of the machine in a controlled space means that you can get really consistent printing and you can produce really high quality results. So that's really cool. I also really like the way that you can just like, you can slide out the build plates. Like it's got a big handle on it. Like I just like that, that's really cool. Yeah. You have uh, different plates. You have this one, perforate plate, glass plate, the other side. Oh, so you can just flip it. Oh, okay, glass, so then you get, yes. right, so you've got like an ultra base type glass on, uh, on one side, like a textured surface, and then the other side is just pure smooth glass. Exactly, and the same, but this one, glass one side. And Right, okay, yeah. and that's like an engineering grade surface, is it? Exactly. That's really cool. So obviously these machines um, at three at three ten on the on the hot end and one ten on or th sorry three hundred on the hot end and one ten on the yeah. bed, you can pretty much print most materials. So all of your carbon fibers, ABSs, yeah. PET Gs, um, anything from um, can, I mean PC can, ABS. Yeah, so your nylons and things like that is going to be able to do those. Nylon is another another prime example of a material that's really hydroscopic, so it sucks that moisture in. Yeah. If your nylon isn't dry 
then it will print like absolute garbage. And it can be really hard sometimes to keep that material stable. So having it inside of this machine is really, really cool. So this tool head is the tool head you use on all of your machines. And then uh, is it, is it the tool head you use on all of the machines? Yeah. <laughs> and they just sort of come in bigger sizes or do the other ones differ? Uh, for the um, dual extrusion system, we, uh, we have different size. The big one, this one, the medium version, this one, and you can use this head or the single right. on every, th every printers. Excellent, cool. So guys, let's now check out the automated bed removal. Okay, so this is the star of Tier Time's booth. This is the Tier Time X5. This is autonomous belt 3D printing, kind of. So try to help me, I mean, so we've got a promotional video. We'll put that up in a second so you guys can see it in action. This one's actually printing at the moment, so I can't put my hand inside, otherwise I'll become horribly disfigured. So, um, so talk to me a little bit about how this system actually works, because I can see you've got sort of like a stack of build plates at the side, and then, yeah, how does it work? It's simple. <laughs> um, as you can see on this one, it's a single extrusion system. So just one filament. Yep. The filament is the filaments you want, PLA, PTG, ABS, and every ABS on the, or uh, fiber filament. Yep. Um, so on this one, uh, you have 12 plates here, plus one here. Right. And when the print is done, the print like this one, just slide over there, and a second one, a new one, can place on this place so the plates go back go down right front, down and simple so it's uh, actually it's a simple PLA for the show yep simple and and it just pops off exactly so this is trying to solve a really key problem that a lot of people have when they're trying to do 3d printing at any sort of scale and that's downtime every single time that your machine isn't running it's costing you money because it should be running and especially if it's waiting for human interaction. So if you're a company that doesn't want to have people on site 24 seven because people have families and children because they're all very selfish, um, then what you can do is you can have this machine doing <laughs> Wait for that to finish. Approximately 10 hours later. So one of the big issues that you have when you're trying to do high volume is the idea that you just basically try to pack out a build plate. That has with it its own issues. As you can see, we're printing pretty much one part on each one of these plates. Those plates just poop out, and then the next plate comes along and it starts the next thing. Stacking a build plate with multiple items, as in having a whole build plate, means that if one of those items fails, that's it. The whole plate fails, the whole print job dies, and your workflow needs to change. With this system, you don't need to worry about that because if one of these models doesn't come out the way that it needs to, it doesn't affect the next model in the sequence. This allows you to create a really great workflow and a really great level of automation in your workflow when you're trying to produce these high volume parts. So, I suppose people's question is how much is something like the X5 gonna cost? The cost? Yeah. Um, it's uh, 4,000. Four th that's not yeah. bad. Um, so on this, uh, this one, you have uh, 30 plates yep. include. You have- um, 30 plates included and 12 go in the machine 13, at once? 13, yes. Wow, okay, yeah. right, fine. Um, this one is a simple add-on. Right. But you have a um, really cool bag. Yeah. Um, and you can put uh, 50, uh, 100 grams filaments, one kilo, two kilo, and more if you want, you can open the, um, the door on, yep. the, on the side. So again, so it's an enclosed thing on the side that allows, you to, that allows you to store that filament and keep that in a controlled space. But if you wanted to, you could have the door open and have a much larger spool that was, that was feeding through to just keep that machine going. Yeah. So that's really cool. At 4,000, that's, really, that's a really competitive price for something that is going to allow you that workflow and that continuous printing. If you were starting an Etsy shop or you were starting small scale manufacturing, something like this could be 
absolutely game-changing for you. We've seen a lot of the community try to do automated bed removal where they tip a machine up and the tool head's supposed to knock off the print or something like that, but this eliminates all of the mechanical issues with it of just removing the plate and just putting a fresh one down. So that's really, really cool. Thank you very much for taking the time. We'll speak to you next time. See you on the next one.